Hello everybody, my name is Sniping is Fun, and I welcome you all back to my next top 10 list here on my YouTube channel. A top 10 list at a topic I actually think is kind of interesting because in the gaming world this has been going on since freaking forever, and that's games that get hate. That's people that complain about video games. And sometimes it's justified, and other times it's not. And I'm not going to get into debate on all that stuff, but this topic details one side of that debate that I feel should be talked about because sometimes there are games out there that get hate and they deserve it. There's other times when they don't. And that's not to say when the when saying the game doesn't deserve hate, it doesn't deserve any sort of you know complaint, any sort of criticism towards it. There are those rare exceptions where there's games that are really good and the complaining is just stupid, really freaking stupid. But oftentimes they're not like people over blow it and they jump the gun and they it, it's it's more hate than the game truly deserves not saying it doesn't deserve hate not saying it doesn't deserve criticism and complaints but oftentimes and not people overdo it and it comes off as being i don't want to say the word hateful but being like very critical on something that really shouldn't be as much of a problem as you guys are making it out to be and they really don't deserve it as much it's my top 10 games that get more hate than they deserve and i know there's gonna be a few games on this list that someone's gonna come across my video and be like oh no that game deserved that i'm not saying they don't deserve some sort of complaint and criticism what i'm saying is i feel they got more than what was warranted per se it's still saying such a thing like that someone's going to disagree with me and come you know come in my comment section or something about it too but what can you do so this before the intro gets on way too long is my top 10 games that i feel get more hate than they actually deserve and number 10 we're starting off with a very well at this point in time it's a classic you know platforming game from a series that prior to this was really popular on the original playstation and then it became multi-platform and that is Crash Bandicoot Wrath of Cortex. Now, the original trilogy of Crash Bandicoot at the time was only on the original PlayStation, was only on Sony, was only on the PlayStation brand. When the fifth generation ended, we jumped to the sixth generation. The franchise became a third party and was on every single platform under the sun from GameCube, Xbox, or whatever, and going forward. And Wrath of Cortex was the first game where it was a multi-platform franchise. And I will agree it's not as good as the original trilogy. I will disagree saying it's complete crap. And a lot of people hate on it massively. Is it perfect? No, but it has redeeming qualities and some good platform and some good gameplay to it that I think it gets a little more hate than it deserves. Not as much as, maybe a little bit more deserved than some of the later multi-platform Crash Bandicoot games, which like Twin Sanity and you know stuff like that, that got, you know, actually it felt like a, a much better game. This was the first time they jumped to a different platform. I can understand it being different. It was a different development team. It was, you know, different, you know, mindset going forward and whatnot. They didn't have everybody from like the PlayStation 1 era working on it. It was a different team and whatnot. I get it's not perfect. I get it's not the greatest Crash Bandicoot game in the world. But Wrath of Cortex was not that bad. It was average. Number nine is going to go to Resident Evil 6. A lot of other Resident Evils tend to get some sort of issue about it. People hated on... Actually, people hated on 4 when it became a little more action-oriented than a lot of the old ones when that one first came out. 5 got a lot of hate for various stupid reasons. The AI being one of them. The setting by some stupid idiots online being another one of them. So on and so forth. Resident Evil 6 just got so much massive hate. And I understand some of the... Like, they, first off, they worked themselves way too thin by doing four campaigns in one game, and all of them were somewhat different, even though they interlapped with each other and whatnot. But uh, I kind of see where they were going for it. Some of the campaigns are a little more action-oriented for those people that want the more action-oriented Resident Evil, like 4 and 5 kind of brought on. And some people want more like survival horror type stuff, like the classics, which is like one or two campaigns kind of had stuff like that. They were trying to blend them together, and while it wasn't perfect and the game wasn't the greatest Resident Evil game in the world, I do think it was not horrible. Some of the campaigns were fun. The set, like the storyline was an interesting concept, seeing a lot of these characters interact, even though, especially because at the time, we never saw Chris and Leon ever interact with each other. We saw, you know, Jake Wesker. We saw the whole 
thing between him and Chris about what happened to Albert Wesker's dad, you know, so on and so forth. It was like, you know, it was cool seeing some of these characters after so long, and it was cool seeing some of these characters interact with each other for like the first time. I understand it's a little too much action oriented stuff, and that's when the negative reception of that gave us Resident Evil 7 and 8, which are first person and way more horror oriented and survival horror. But I don't think Resident Evil 6 was that bad, and it wasn't really that horrible for Resident Evil. And I enjoyed it for what it was. And it feels like them trying to blend styles like action with the thing kind of did better when they were doing like the Revelations games. But I'd say at the time it was it was mad, but it wasn't like the worst thing in the world. Anybody, you know, people, it really wasn't. Number eight is going to go to Fable 3. Now, the Fable franchise in general, I could say more than just three, kind of got its own crap into the deal, but that was also because when they first were making the games, it was, you know, they were they were promising too much and they didn't deliver on the first Fable. I like the first Fable quite a lot. Is it perfect? No. But it was good for what it was, and then they improved the pilot with 2, and 2, a lot of people love 2. 2 was actually a step above, really, 1, and then I feel a lot of people win against three because three was kind of like a backtracking kind of a thing i never really played much of three because like i said i for me i'm not the biggest xbox guy i had the og xbox i played my friends and cousins xbox after a while, like the 360 and all that stuff and the xbox one and then i finally jumped back on with the series s so i never really got to fully experience three but i'm like it couldn't be as bad as what people make it out to be and a lot of the complaints more so detail it's not as good as two it's a downgrade from two some of the features some of the modes the way it ran you know so on and so forth fable 3 gets hate it's not the worst thing in the world there the motion control freaking connect fable is far worse this new fable we're supposed to be getting soon probably will be worse the original trilogy will be looked on more prominently when this new one comes out because i can almost guarantee you this new fable is probably not going to be that good but Fable 3 was not that bad. It was okay. There's some people that hate it. There's some people that love it, but I think it's a little more hate than it actually deserves. Number six? No, it's six. No, we're, all right, seven. Man, I'm too tired right now to freaking know what number I'm on. Seven, people. <laughs> seven. Goes to Star Fox Zero. I understand the complaints on it. Most of the complaints for it come from the controls because you have to use the Wii U gamepad and so on and so forth and do all this stuff. I don't think that's necessarily the worst thing, but at the same time, I think it should have at least gave you options. My main complaint with the game, and I've seen people complain about this too, is like it feels like you have this franchise that they are building a storyline up from the Super Nintendo in the 64, and then you just did a hard reset and, oh, saved the Lilat system from Andros. That was my main complaint for the game, is it felt like it was just a retread, a start over, a remake. The controls were like secondary to that. I'm not saying that means it's a bad game. I just wanted to see more continuation after like Star, uh, you know, Star Fox Command and whatnot. But a lot of people hate on it mostly because it's just a retread or because of the controls with the gamepad. And some of that stuff could easily be rectified with a Switch port where they could fix the controls, at least half of it. And then the other half could be, let's hopefully just get a new Star Fox game at some point where they continue the story going forward because I'm tired of just save the Lilat system from Andros for like the fourth time. Now we are on to six, and that goes to Batman Arkham Origins. I know it was made by a different team than the main Arkham games. I know it was not necessarily as good as the main Arkham games, but the gameplay was still there. The storyline was still there. The character development was still there. It had some fun villains. It, it, the way they presented the game was good. It was not as good as Asylum or you know City or you know <clears throat> Night and whatnot, but I think it was a fine game. It was a good fourth game in the series despite not being in the main trilogy by the main development team and it had some fun ideas that they integrated into it especially when you played it on like the Wii U with the gamepad and doing stuff like that that was fun so I think it gets a little too much hate and I don't really get some of the hate it gets we're finally in the top five and this one right here this is going to be a very controversial one because this game got so so much massive hate back in 2010 and especially for the franchise it was in compared to what came before it and how long of a gap afterwards till we started getting stuff good again like on switch and it goes to metroid other m i understand the complaints on the game the storyline this samus did that talking this blah 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 that and this 
I think some of that stuff is really stupid. My main complaint with the game at the time was the controls. It really should have had a nunchuck and not just be the Wii Remote on the side when you're moving or when you're shooting like this. It should have been like a Metroid Prime game with the like Metroid Prime 3 with the nunchuck as an option. My main complaint was controls. Storyline-wise, I feel some of that stuff made some sense given it takes place right after Super and Samus was near dead before the baby Metroid saved her from Mother Brain and then the return of Adam and blah, 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 all this stuff going on. She's human. I understand her having some emotions. Was it a little overdone? Sure. Especially with the whole Ridley thing, which I think dives into whether or not certain games are canon or not or how certain games end because in my book, I don't think Ridley actually died till Super and the Prime games are kind of like this weird thing because it's given it's from Rare, I mean from Retro, and the main development team of the series from Nintendo has two confl conflicting storylines. But in my mind, really didn't die till Super, so seeing him come back really doesn't affect it. So most of the complaints are from the storyline telling, which I think a lot of it stems from, as far as I've been hearing, the English voice acting version. Japan didn't have necessarily half the stuff that I think we got here in you know the English version in America. So I think that might be a dialect change up when they translate the game too so that's it i've heard complaints like i've been saying about the controls but most of the complaints are storytelling and character development i think a lot of people over blew it way too damn much number four is going to go to final fantasy 13 it's definitely not the best final fantasy i understand the complaints for it it's way too linear compared to especially a lot of Final Fantasies prior to it, especially the one that just came above 4, 12, which was so open and a big game. It was like a single-player MMO. But um, Final Fantasy XIII I thought was fine in terms of the music department. The battling was different. I never got a chance to finish Final Fantasy XIII, but that was also because of other things from outside, like work and school and what, well, when that came out. Yeah, school and some work-related stuff with that. Um... But I don't really like, unless it opens up later on, you only being able to control, like, lightning. But, and not the whole party. I don't know if that changes later on in the game, but I never got a chance to fully get into it. But what I played of it, I actually kind of liked. I think the storyline was good. I think the characters are developed quite well, especially when you get to 13-2 and lightning returns. Especially 13-2. Lightning returns maybe not as much. But 13-2 really was a step up above this game. But the first one... I think it was fine for what it was, and I think in terms of storytelling and character development and somewhat gameplay, I think it's fine. Is it way too linear for a Final Fantasy? Hell yeah, it is. Does that make it bad? Not necessarily. It just makes it kind of meh. It's not the best Final Fantasy, like I said, but it's not deserving of the hate it got. And I think a lot of people look back on it a little more fondly now than they did back when it first came out. We are in the top three, and number three goes to another Nintendo franchise, which recently has been getting very mixed reactions, like Metroid, <laughs> from gamers and whatnot, and that's Fire Emblem, and it's Fire Emblem Fates on the 3DS. Fire Emblem Fates got a lot of massive hate, and some of it was stemmed from the fact that they separated three different storylines into three different games. You had to buy the separate games. It was like Pokemon, pretty much. You had two main ones, and then you got a third one as DLC that you could download. I understand the complaint on that. That's stupid. I never got the redemption or whatever the third storyline was. I bought the two games and I never got that. Um, but I thought the characters were fine. A lot of people don't like how the characters were. Some people don't like... And a lot of people don't like the whole modern day Fire Emblem thing where it's the big waifu anime thing, which besides them kind of pushing a little bit more now, that's always been the thing for Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem's always had an anime art style since it debuted back in 1990. That's not something new. It was just, it's adapts to the art styles of anime and manga since then to now. Every decade has different art styles as they upgraded. That's not a major complaint. The whole waifu thing, I don't really care. The whole point of Fire Emblem is usually building up your supports, which sometimes in certain games resorts in falling in love and getting married and having children. That's not really a bad thing. Um, I think a lot of complaints, though, from this one were mostly dived into like the storyline telling, which I didn't think was that bad. I A lot of people hate Fates and stuff like that, but I think it was fine. Is it as good as Awakening? No, but I think it was better than people give it credit for, and it's one of... It's, 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 
It's about the same as where I put Echoes. I think Awakening is the definitive 3DS Fire Emblem, but Echoes, Shadows of Valentia, and then the three Fates games are pretty much neck and neck right behind it, which I think both of them are pretty good. Number two goes to Mass Effect 3, and a lot of the complaining came from the ending of the game that they pretty much pretty much put like some sort of like... They had pretty much attacked the creators and got them to try to make stuff and change stuff up and this stuff, and that resorted in like a DLC ending later on and Bioware and whatnot. And it's just like, it was stupid. I understand a lot of people grew attached to the characters and didn't assume the storyline was going to go where it was going to go from you know Mass Effect 1 and 2 and the 3, but... I think people overdid it a little bit with the complaining, despite the fact that I understand where people are coming from, but there's different ways of going about it. But at least for the, they, they got what they wanted. They got different endings. They got like an adjusted ending and whatnot. So there you go. But the gameplay was still as good as 2 was, and 2 still a definitive Mass Effect from back then. Anyways, and still now, given that some of the recent Mass Effect stuff. So Mass Effect 3 is, I don't think it deserves as much hate as it gets. And before we get to number one, some honorable mentions of games that I think maybe deserve hate a little bit more than the top 10, but they get a little too much hate compared to what they really should be getting in terms of complaints and criticism and whatnot. The first Watch Dogs mostly was kind of like, I think it fell under ex, you know expectations. I think that's the most reason for that. Grand Theft Auto 4, which I'm seeing more people like now than when it first came out, which I understand they kind of changed stuff up a little bit. It was a little too much realistic, especially in the driving situation. And but that but uh, people are looking back on it fondly now, so it's fine. The first Destiny, which I think is fine. Destiny 2 deserves almost all the hate it gets. It's not that great, but the first Destiny I think was pretty good. A pretty good start to it that they just kind of fumbled when they gave with the sequel. Spiral the Dragon, Enter the Dragonfly. Crash Bandicoot Wrath of Cortex deserves a little bit less criticism than this. Both franchises, when they became third parties, fell off the cliff. But both of them didn't deserve as much hate as people gave them. Mostly Crash, but Spyro was there too. Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain. A lot of that stems from the whole Kojima versus Konami thing that happened back when the game came out. He didn't get a chance to finish it. There's missing stuff from it. It feels a little less or so and missing stuff because it's not really complete it's an incomplete game technically but i thought it was fun for what it was and assassin's creed unity which when it came out was a bug filled mess but when they finally fixed everything and made the game it was pretty much just an average assassin's creed game which that's the best i can say about it it's an enjoyable game but it's it's forgettable too it's not necessarily bad it's just forgettable it's it's okay in the gameplay department so, drum roll, please, for the number one game I feel gets a little too much hate, Uncharted 3. Uncharted 3 gets way more hate than I feel it deserves. Um, I understand people that liked the first two and then one of that and didn't really like it. A lot of this stuff stemmed from difference in gameplay. They changed a lot of stuff up, which for multiplayer really ruined like online multiplayer for me in Uncharted 3. But the story mode was still pretty good. And the gameplay wasn't like too far off with and power-ups and sprinting and all sorts of stuff that modern day games at the time had. I still think the story was not as good as 2. 2 is still my definitive favorite Uncharted game of all time. For sure. And the online multiplayer was one of the reasons for it. But making me love that game so much um but uncharted 3 wasn't bad i got into the story i liked the characters i like seeing the backstory on nathan drake and so on and so forth and i'd like to see more hmm and i'd like to see more coming from it i'd like to I, I i didn't have too much of a complaint for the game like it's just it was fun for what it was. I enjoyed it. I got into the characters and the storylines. I finished it, enjoyed it. Finally finished the trilogy at the time before the fourth one came out. And I never played the PSP ones. Or the PSV or whatever one. But I liked it for what it was. It's not as good as two. It's technically not even good as one. Sort of, depending on how you look at it. One, Storyline-wise-ish. But um, I thought Uncharted 3 got a little too much hate back then. I think it's looked a little more fondly now. But it doesn't really deserve a lot of the hate it gets. I think it's a overall fine. Game. And that's my list. My name is Slack. It fun. Peace. Please subscribe if you want to. Have a lovely day. Put in the comment section what you guys think. Do you guys think any of these top 10 games plus these honorable mentions deserve the hate they get? And what other games do you personally think get a little too much hate? Put it down there in the discussion section. We can talk about it. Have some fun. My name is Sniping is Fun. And I'll see you later in the next video. Bye, everyone.